Ms. Rand, before you said that the, the accumulation of non-objective laws is one step on the road to dictatorship, do you think any link could be made between this, this statement and the, the phenomenon of President Kennedy and the steel industry a few years ago? Do you think that's an example of the extension of non-objective law into the realm of direct coercion, even when no law is present by the federal government or by any government? Oh, yes. I certainly uh, would say so. You're referring to the so-called steel crisis when President Kennedy attempted to penalize the steel industry for not accepting his economic guidelines in the matter of settling a union contract when he had no authority at all to regulate collective bargaining in industry or to promulgate any such guidelines. There was a blatant and obvious example of non-objective law in action because if you remember President Kennedy quite openly invoked the antitrust laws against the steel companies and uh, initiated all sorts of intimidation tactics, most of them based on antitrust legislation. In other words, he was intimidating and coercing the particular group that had displeased him at that time without any legal authority to do so, merely under the threat of the fact that he had a body of law which he could use at his arbitrary discretion. Incidentally, observe that today, President Johnson is putting down guidelines. Nobody is objecting to violently, and they seem to, for the moment, abide by his guidelines, at least approximately. He is doing quietly what had been done by Kennedy in such a dramatic and noisy manner, so that the president once established is now being carried on without much protest, and that's another disastrous consequence of non-objective law.